We're in the Greatest Generation exhibit here at the Minnesota History Center talking to some great civic leaders and we're going to talk a little bit about the question of democracy and your rights and responsibilities as a citizen. And uh, a lot of people don't give this much thought. They're busy living their lives, going to work, paying the bills. But we really do need to think more about our, our rights and responsibilities as citizens. Um, you, you're involved personally as, as the person who runs the elections in our state, Mark. Um, what, what comes to your mind here? As the well, one thing about being in this exhibit and sort of being reminded of all the things that people built and all the institution was the sort of clarity that having two world wars essentially in one generation brought to the conversations after the war and towards the end of the war about how do we avoid a third world war and they had a simple understanding which is economic dislocation and crisis the great depression human rights violation and subjugation colonization these were the things that were the origins of war and therefore they built institutions, global institutions, to address economic and human rights and other issues. They knew that if you wanted peace, you had to find justice and economic stability and progress for people. So that construct, how do we avoid a third world war? We avoid it by addressing social issues, economic issues, human rights issues, was a pretty clear understanding. And so the civic responsibility today has not changed dramatically. That the sort of um, flashpoints of hot war, the flashpoints of conflict, their origins can be found in questions of community and of culture and of economic and other instability. And so citizens today have the same responsibility, which is to be part of the process of voting and elections, running for office, but also to address those economic and social issues that then are the origins of some of the most dramatic of the conflicts. Being here in this exhibit is one way to be reminded that this has been a perpetual, perhaps throughout human history, a struggle for everyone, and that we are standing on shoulders and we have many of the same responsibilities. It's important to vote, it's important to be part of that process, but it's also equally important to be part of the community building that gives us the conditions for peace, for justice, and for economic prosperity. Right. I think what Mark's talking about is really critical being a good citizen is not just being a good participant and it's not just about being a good participant in government it's actually bringing that civic ethic to every sector that you engage in whether you work uh, in a for-profit or a non-profit whether you're part of the faith-based community whether you're a member or a leader in that organization that civic ethic needs to travel with you everywhere all of these institutions together is what builds our society and that's um, one of the fantastic things about this exhibit, is that it does a great job of showing that rich narrative of that, yes, we had very robust uh, functions in government. We had incredibly powerful armies at that time. But we also were building incredible economic engines, not just domestically here, but um, we were building them abroad as well. Um, the fact of the matter is that no one does well in a bad world. Mm -hmm. That's what citizenship is all about. It's transcending your own individual and individual institutional short-term needs and understanding that your ultimate self-interest is in the common interest. We all do better and we all do better. Absolutely. There's a certain irony, excuse me, Sean, um, in individualism today when we are so we are connected in a way that we have never been connected. I mean, this generation dealt with the party line. Uh, you had somebody else had to hang up in order for you to make the call that you wanted to make. That's not true anymore. We do go to the internet, we click, we send an email to somebody around the world. We are connected. And so our sense of community, I think, is not even just defined within the nation. I think Nate's right. It's a world community. And I think all of us have a responsibility not only to be engaged and to be aware and our own at the very local level from the family to the village to the whatever but also to the world, because we no longer live. We can't afford to live in isolation. This generation uh, found that they did not, in fact, the world became the world for mm -hmm. them, even though the world was tiny before this all came to be through in World War II, all of a sudden the world was the world. For us, again, we have to learn that the world is the world, and we all as individuals, it's not just our leaders, it's all of us have a responsibility to be aware and to be engaged with people around the world. I think one of the things that came out of this generation was that um, it was not an elite thing or an academic exercise to be involved. And this notion of responsibility 
was something that they made very real and very practical from pe for people. So I don't think, I've not talked with anybody from this generation that couldn't tell you something that they did every day at home, on the farm, in the workplace, in the community. So they, the, the, the common threat was clear. They made the responsibility, the opportunity to contribute something that people could do wherever they are. And I think that's something um, that we have to remember today, to, to take that out of something that you either want to think about but aren't sure what to do, um, to, to a situation where you can actually contribute, you can, you can express these responsibilities wherever you are every day. I think one of the challenges, though, as we think about today, that is happening today, right? We're seeing more of a democratization of information, a democratization of journalism, individuals being able to speak and act in a way that, haven't, that technology makes available in a very different kind of way. Um, and now the challenge is, it's now almost a cacophony of voices. How do, you organ how do you get heard and how does that energy and focus actually drive to um, a movement of actually creating greater civic engagement and not just sort of shouting into the wind? And how is that? I think this generation had a more focused idea because it was clearer. It was easier to say, well, I know what I'm doing. I, I know when I'm saving this tinfoil, what I'm doing and what effort I'm working towards. I know what I'm doing when I'm taking this action. Whereas now there is less of that clarity around what, what is the outcome of the particular action I'm taking and what does that mean, with the exception of possibly voting, um, our current Senate race notwithstanding, <laughs> um, that, um, that it is less clear for people. You have more opportunities to engage in very, very different ways. But what does that mean in the context of being an engaged citizen? Right. One of the big words we learned in personal citizenship in the eighth grade was efficacy. And like, what does that mean? And it, it's this sense, of, as they explained, does the sense that what you do matters, that you have, there's some end point to what you're doing in the voting booth or at a community meeting. And, and, you, and you don't want people to ever lose that sense and feel like it, things don't matter and there's no reason to participate.